Good evening, everyone. I'm WCI3 meteorologist Jacob Dickey. The time now is 815. We've got another digital coverage here, a digital update on our strong to severe storms moving through the area. We've added another warning to the book, and so we want to talk to our friends in Iroquois County right now. And that Iroquois County warning has been extended until 915. A pretty strong storm now from Onarga to Watsika, pushing to the south into southern parts of Iroquois County and Benton County. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. Uh, in the meantime, though, while folks are checking on in, uh, just make sure things are sounding good, things are A-OK -okay and whatnot, and uh, we'll get rolling here in just a second um, from this severe thunderstorm morning. That's it. Elsewhere, we've got some scattered showers and a few storms near Bloomington, Downs, towards McLean. That line continues, but the focus is right here. Iroquois County and Benton County. Uh, from this storm as it continues to move off to the south at about 25 to 35 miles an hour. Let's zoom on in here and talk about the warning. This severe thunderstorm warning for Iroquois County from Onarga to Cisna Park and points to the east, as well as all of Benton County goes until 915, mainly 60 mile an hour winds now rolling into Cisna Park and Milford. Uh, eventually will be making its way towards Hoopston. No warning for Hoopston. That's in Vermilion County, but we think this storm may continue its strength in that general direction. This storm not only will have straight line wind potential, but also a lot of lightning and thunder with it. Here's US 24. That's the main thoroughfare from Watsika to Pontiac. Route 9 sits right here. You've got Interstate 57, Interstate 45. We've got Route 1 right here. Uh, just a note, the latest update does put a tornado possible tag on this. And so uh, production in the back, if you are hearing me, can someone talk to me in my IFB real quick? Uh, I just want to make sure that you guys are listening back there. Um, with this new update, the tornado possible tag being added as sometimes there can be a little bit of rotation in there. I've been watching a little spot along the state line. I think that's what they're looking at. And so that's what we're going to continue to monitor here across the region with a severe thunderstorm warning. The tornado possible tag, just a early heads up, no tornado warning, but it just means we're watching something. That's that latest update that came on in. And so we're going to watch that very closely. Just checking to see if I have any updates. Um, no other official updates uh, from the National Weather Service. Just that tornado possible tag with a severe thunderstorm warning that goes until 915. This does not include Buckley or Lotus, though there's a lot of lightning and thunder there. And I'll show you that in a minute uh, as we watch here, continue to monitor things with this strong storm rolling on through. What I'll do now is I'm going to pull up the velocity and uh, we're going to look at it from a couple of different vantage points here where you see maybe that little area of rotation is on the edge of it over here along the state line near Earl Park. There could be another one though near Milford, but really the big story is those bright pinks and indication of some strong straight line winds coming down Highway 1 through Milford and into Wellington right now. So we're going to watch that and keep a very close eye on it here and uh, continue to monitor things here for a little while. So the time now is 818. What I want to do real quick is I'm going to throw up the sky cams real fast. I'm going to show you uh, what it looks like in Champaign. We'll do a little tour in some of our sites that are around the area. This is the look. You can see uh, off in the distance those storms to the west in parts of DeWitt and McLean County. Non-severe but still worth monitoring here. We'll take another quick peek here at our uh, studio camera. It's, that's the one we're looking at. Okay, let's go to our stadium camera. I think that's going to be facing to the south, unless it's reset itself. Okay, it's not working like I'm, I'm hoping it would. Here we go. Try that in a second and uh, take a peek. That one looking off to the south. I want to look at our Bloomington one right now. Let's take a look at Bloomington here, and you'll see there's some rain showers in the vicinity, a very ominous looking sky. It's a lot of different colors here as we continue to see that. Gibson City, I think going to be the same story here, the sun setting. Nice bright colors in the sunset here as some of these scattered storms are rolling their way on through. And uh, we'll head on up to Pontiac. Pontiac now all clear from the storm, but still seeing some light showers in the neighborhood. Back to radar real quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it full as I'm talking. We just have that severe thunderstorm warning. And I'm going to just let my folks in production know real fast. I don't think they're paying attention. Um, we're just going to monitor things here really fast. Uh, just so you know in production, hey, um, I'm on standby. We've got a tornado possible tag, no warning, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up since I don't think anyone was watching. So just uh, monitor that. We're still on Facebook right now, and if need be, we'll jump on TV, though I don't think that's going to be the case. It's mainly that straight line winds of 60 mile an hour plus coming into Milford, Cisna Park areas that has me more concerned. I'll be remiss. We'll just check some of these other little spot showers and storms out here. You can see along US 136 from Hayworth and Bloomington to the west. 
Not a whole lot of concern there. Our main event tonight is going to be Iroquois County, and many times it's seemed like that's been the case for us here. And uh, so we're continuing to monitor this severe thunderstorm warning in Iroquois County. Let me do real quick is I'm going to check some of my sources of information, and then we're going to check a different product here and take as many different looks as we can. And we like to look at these storms in different viewpoints and different uh, methods, but I want to make sure too if there's any questions and any reports coming on in. Uh, this storm moving to the south and southeast. Some heavy rain, some frequent lightning, likely some gusty winds. I have not heard a last check of any power outages in Iroquois County. That still does not appear to be the case. That's good news here, uh, but a strong storm with, I mean, you look at some of these velocity is in here as I pull up the Chicago radar. You know, there's bright pinks here, an indication of 60 to 65 mile an hour winds. Route one is here that carries you south into Hoopston. There's Wellington, Stockland, uh, Milford, Woodland, Sheldon sits here, Crescent City is there. That's moving through eastern Iroquois County along and east of Route one towards the Interstate 57 quarter, 57 quarter, not overly concerned at this point. Uh, but we still think that that strongest wind signature indicating that it's now in eastern Iroquois County. The National Weather Service tends to agree with that. They did add the tornado possible tag, though. Uh, you kind of look back and, you know, maybe a little bit trying to, but it's not immediately likely at this time. Straight line winds, though, will still do quite a bit of tree damage for parts of Iroquois County. Here's back to our warning. I'll pull up the text so we can show you that again. 60 mile an hour winds is what this severe thunderstorm warning is warned for. Hail, not a concern today. There is a tornado possible tag, though, that's been added to this. And uh, that's mainly for Iroquois County is moving on in. We think it'll make it to northern and northeastern Vermilion County. But the general trend in my mind, as we loop this back the last hour, we can kind of look at what it's done and then what it's going to do. Oh, uh, let's do it on this app right here. And a different vantage point here. You can see that southward movement with a bit of eastward movement. So I think Hoopston would probably be about all for Vermilion County that we'd have to watch. And then it would be Indiana that would be a concern. So Danville at this point, I'm not overly concerned about it. Champaign-Urbana, not really worried. But definitely a bunch of wind now in southeastern Iroquois County. Milford, Stockland, Wellington, Hoopston. Uh, and off to the east of Hoopston, you go to the state line places like that seeing that here. So we're going to watch this closely and keep on digital platforms for a little while longer just to get a vantage point uh, of things here. Other than that, uh, the rest of these scattered showers and storms, Bloomington, Hayworth, Atlanta, Lincoln, you've got Hartsburg, Emden, uh, off towards Mason County. This moving off to the south and east, this is going to have the best chance to bring at least a few lightning strikes and some uh, chance for a few showers into Champaign County. I know the fair is going on tonight. They're probably seeing lightning at this point, or at least in the next hour, once the sun sets from those storms far away. And um, continuing to watch that here. No warnings on that, but still, if you've got some lightning close by, I think it's within 10 miles, that's enough of a concern to where they'll have to, you know, probably shut things down and consider relocating folks uh, in the fairgrounds. Lightning, of course, dangerous. The wind and the severe threat is mainly in that Iroquois County storm. And as I watch that here, I'll go back to the velocity. You can see that core of pinks really racing to the south and east, east of Highway 1. So this may be the northeastern corner of, of Vermilion County. Hoopston, Rossville points to the north and east that see that if there's an extension. Uh, of course, right here is Ambia, town in the state line. There's Boswell. Probably those areas will get the wind. Not really worried about Potomac. I think it'll stay north and east of Danville. Champaign-Urbana, this storm not going to be our problem. This will be Iroquois County mainly. You look at the velocity product on um, the storms off to our east, and yeah, there's some brighter colors in here, but it's nothing quite as much of a straight line wind threat, I think, as this storm in Iroquois County uh, is in the area. So we'll have to watch it pretty closely. We'll go back to our sky cams and just peek around here. And I'm going to pull that champagne one, and then I'm going to turn it in the direction that, uh, so we can kind of pan and peek at it here. So this is looking off to the west. I want to look to the north. And you can see that storm off to the west. There was a photo that came in. I posted it on Facebook. Very similar shot here. You can see there's updraft and the overcast sky in place. The sun hitting underneath, really giving a nice view. And that's been the case as well as our in our Gibson City camera that I had up a little earlier ago. But primarily now as I turn this camera at the studio, turn it off to the north, I'll even bring it full screen for your benefit. Uh, you can see just that beautiful color here in the sky. 
from this particular storm here. Taking it, uh, okay, we're trying to, there we go, slowly moving here. Sometimes our cameras will be a little sticky, a little rusty, you know, I don't want to move, a little cranky, but that's all right. So now we're turning off to the north. This is the storm up in Iroquois County. You got a pretty nice look at it here, and uh, you can see the overshooting top in that storm. You know, I think at this point we'd call it a, a super cell thunderstorm. And the reason being is you, know, you get a great vantage point of that. Um, what we're looking at, and I'll kind of point some things out. It's a little harder to see when I don't have it full screen here. This is the overshooting top of the storm. The air moves so quickly upwards that it hits the top of the troposphere and has to, uh, has to spread out, it hits the tropopause essentially, and spreads out. And as it does so then, you know, you see that anvil, that, that supercell. And then, of course, the sun off to the west setting really gives a nice view of that. A uh, really, really cool shot here from our Champagne camera. I'm going to save a, uh, I'm going to save a snapshot of that because I really like that for future use. But uh, that's that storm up in Iroquois County. Still, though, right now, it's 826. We've got the severe thunderstorm warning with a tornado possible tag. My most likely thought is that if there was something to spin on it, it's going to be in Benton County, Indiana. Straight line winds in southeastern Iroquois County look strong north and east of Hoopston, Stockland, Wellington, Milford. I call that area Wellington, Linford, and uh, that little neck of the woods here in southeastern Iroquois County. But this here, an indication, may be a little inflow. And you get the wind surging south here. Sometimes you can get a little spin here. That'd be on US 41 in Benton County. No tornado warning. No uh, immediate signs of it, but again, when we have the tornado possible tag in place, that's just an indication that, hey, we're watching something. It's not immediately likely. It's kind of an early heads up, a step before tornado warning. I don't think you need a shelter um, from it, but you know, we're monitoring it. It's just kind of one of those early little red flags that we have here. Sometimes they don't produce anything. Most of the time they don't, but it's a nice little uh, extra extra uh, info in the bank that we can use to help illustrate what's going on with these storms. And that's the case for that Iroquois County storm. But again, as I show you the velocity products, I really think with the surging winds here, that's a strong wind core now north and east of Hoopston. That would be more of a fowler towards uh, Benton County, Indiana issue. So the strong winds though, boy, is that going to be strong winds through Stockland right now north and east of Hoopston by a few miles as that carries on in Ambia next in line. Ambia sits in the state line there kind of at the corner of Vermilion and um, Iroquois County and the Indiana State Line. That newest update just came in. They updated the warning. They took off the tornado possible tag. So they were seeing it initially, not seeing it as much anymore. And I tend to agree with that here. Um, you know, it was kind of there a little bit, you know, okay, we'll kind of watch it and just check. But really the wind is going to be the main part here. And another sign that the wind is going to be that main concern as I'll kind of draw it out for you here, you see that that almost uh, backward C look. You know, it's moving south. Normally our storms move west to east, so it's more of a backward C, you know, up and down if anything. But that surging wind coming out here into southeastern Iroquois, far northeastern Vermilion County in Benton County, Indiana, we'll see if there's an extension of the warning into Vermilion County. I'm not certain that's going to be the case. It may be a near miss. You know, just right on the corner there. And, you know, you zoom in, you talk about Hoopston. There's Hoopston. There's Route 9 off to the east here. There's really not much there. Route 9 turns into Indiana 26. There's Ambia. Uh, just some farms. I mean, this might be the, the three miles corner of, of Vermilion County that will see some of the strongest winds there. No warning. I really think even Hoopston, from what I'm seeing, it may just be to the north and east of town. But that uh, wind really, in my mind, surging out pretty strong here. I'm pretty impressed with those velocity products from um, seeing things here. That core of wind continuing to push off to the south and uh, continuing to do so. One thing to note is that to this area of purple that's in place is showing uh, it's basically data that's distorted or it can't pick on out. So we're getting a little far from the radar there. Kind of this area maybe doesn't have the best view, but you can still make out some of those bright pinks here in southeastern Iroquois County carrying into Benton County. And that's where the strongest wind is going to be here. Still, I suspect there's been some rain and thunder for Cisna Park, even in Arnarga. And I'll flip back over to the lightning. And, you know, look at that. Boy. In fact, if I um, query that lightning, just see here those couple of storms. 
Whew, wow, 550 strikes in the last 15 minutes. That's an average of 2,000 strikes an hour. That's pretty impressive here. An electric storm in New York County. A lot of lightning and thunder over Gilman and Narga. Another big core from Milford towards Sheldon and uh, east of Watsika here as that carries off to the south. That's a powerful storm moving through Iroquois County and uh, continuing in that direction. So pretty much is an Iroquois County issue. And I think that may be it for the night maybe far northeastern vermilion we've just got this one severe thunderstorm warning that's in effect uh, the other thing that's interesting to me here usually most lightning is a negative but the positive strikes indicate this is a very strong storm here and so i will uh, not be surprised if we don't get some power outages in parts of iroquois county before long just going to refresh it if you have a report you can send it in the chat i'm also going to check some of our social media platforms and see if there's any reports that sneak on in um, as certainly, uh, I'm pretty impressed with that storm at this point. Uh, let's see, Iroquois County got no reports, but we have a handful of outages in Kankakee County. It may take a little time for some of those power outages, if they happen to even come on into, you know, it takes a little while, but you know, we don't get instantaneous, oh, power's out, unless someone tells us in the chat. That's the lone exception to that. But this storm moving off to the south and southeast here, I think in the general direction it's heading, I'll kind of draw the a line this storm should stay to the right of that line. Maybe we get some more thunder a little further west and some more scattered storms, but the core of the worst storm, there, this constant lightning that Tracy's reporting, um, that will probably stay to the north and east of Danville. For Champaign-Urbana, that's good news. I know we've got the county fair going on. We'll watch this batch of storms here from Bloomington towards Lincoln, not looking severe, not looking all that intense, not even a lot of lightning with it, but it just takes one strike for you know, things to have to close down in Champaign County at the, the fairgrounds. I don't want people outside in any lightning, and I think the rule is 10 miles. So we'll see. We'll watch it. Uh, they've got folks that are taking care. I still think it's a great night to get out and enjoy things here across the region. Let's go back to the camera. I'm going to point at that Champaign camera, and we're probably going to get to the point now where we'll start seeing some of that lightning here. So let me go ahead and pull it full screen and we'll just kind of watch and see here as the sun goes down you may start seeing some of that lightning in the clouds there we're watching it um pretty impressive looking storm here just checking some information checking some data here if you've got any reports let me know in the chat trace is saying moved the there was a little flash in the distance moved the trampoline across the yard in milford constant lightning and I imagine folks that are a bit closer are probably getting a much better vantage point. But that's a pretty powerful storm now in Iroquois County. At least 60 mile an hour winds moving on through, uh, if not maybe a little higher than that. Just checking a few other sources here. You know, there's about 10 billion ways that we can get information. So I got to check them all and give them all the opportunity to kind of get some reports and check on in. Let's see here. Uh, checking that one real fast. Uh, yeah, I apologize. It's sometimes how it goes here. Lots of thunder and lightning being reported in Gilman. So we're seeing that storm for sure continue off to the south and to the east. All right, uh, let's jump back to the radar real quick as I Tracy's got some pictures she's going to send. I appreciate that, Tracy. April saying uh, inch and a half in Watsika. I assume that's rain. In Watsika, heavy rainfall with these storms, too. That's the way this is, scattered in nature. The storm of the day is going to be that Iroquois County storm. The warning continues until um, 9.15, but the edge of it now in Hoopston, really riding on the line from that storm here. I really think here, you know, the core of the wind in my mind is more towards Ambia, Hickory Grove, over towards Boswell, Indiana. Still, though, I think you'll get lots of lightning. Wellington, Milford, Stockland sits there. Hoopston is right here. You go to the east of Hoopston and Route 9, it turns into Indiana 26. And there's a brief little spot. It's Illinois 352. It carries it up to uh, Ambi. I mean, that's like a little mile stretch there. And um, continuing to move on in. So not surprised on it. That severe thunderstorm warning for Iroquois County continues. There's a lot of folks checking in from elsewhere. We don't have a lot else going on here. You see a broken line of some scattered showers and storms from near Hayworth towards Wapella, Waynesville, towards Lincoln, and then off into western Illinois. No warnings in that. Really, the only warning and the only real concern I have for severe weather is going to be that Iroquois County storm. You can see all the lightning there. Not a whole lot being seen, though, in these uh, batches. A few strikes in Logan County here and there. You can see those little 
indications and um, little indicators, the lightning bolt there. Christy saying she'll send a photo through the WCI 3 weather app. That's a great app and a great way to send things as well. All right, just checking those other storms here. That's Mason County, Havana, the Illinois River towards Beardstown. A lot of lightning with those two. The general trends of those is going to be to the south and to the east. Here. I'll loop it over the last three hours. Kind of give you a vantage point here. Now, thankfully, it looks like maybe it's going to be our lucky day in Champaign where, you know, fingers crossed, knock on wood, you know, catch a penny face up in the ground. However you do your luck, maybe it's going to miss us. And that'd be fine here. We know Iroquois County getting some copious lightning, a lot of thunder too. That storm has averaging 2,000 strikes an hour as it continues off to the south and east. General, in general, the boundary pushing straight south, but there's eastward component to the storms here. And uh, maybe that little break in the line, you can see the downward trend in those storms south of Peoria. I'll take it. You know, honestly, that wouldn't be the end of the world for us here in central Illinois. It's something we're going to watch here pretty closely. All right, uh, it is 8, what time is it? 8.36. We're going to kind of stick on here for a little bit while longer. What I want to do is see if we're going to get any extension. There we can see National Weather Service in Indianapolis just extended it for parts of Fountain County, Indiana. Uh, we're going to see if Lincoln extends the severe thunderstorm warning for Vermilion County. If it does happen, I think it's going to be a line that's like Hoopston and basically northeast of Bismarck. Not overly concerned at this point with Danville, Potomac, Oakwood. Definitely not really worried in Ridge Farm, Georgetown down towards Seidel, Jamaica, Indiana. There it is. There's the new warning that just popped on in. Uh, that new severe thunderstorm warning going to include Bismarck, Rossville, Hoopston, Potomac. And uh, that is going to go until, let me check my data real quick. That will go until 915 as well. So we've extended the warning south and east here. It's a severe thunderstorm warning for Vermilion County until 915. Let's uh, pop on some of the text here. I should say that's Warren County, Indiana. My apologies, it's like Fountain County. Um, so I'm just going to get a social media post out here real quick, uh, and then we'll direct folks on, kind of talk about it, and that's the way it goes. So uh, this is for 60 mile per hour winds until 9:15. The time now is 8:37 p. New severe for Vermilion County goes until 9:15 p. In fact, that'll be northeastern Vermilion County. Main concern is 60 mile per hour winds as storms move southeast at 35 mile per hour. We are live on our digital platforms now. Okay, let me get that, and then I just gotta click some buttons and post that new warning. Anyone at the WCIA 3 weather app already got the warning if you reside in the polygon. The nice thing about the new app, we had some folks say, hey, I didn't get the warning in Vermilion County or you know, I didn't get it in Ford County. We had some warnings earlier. Um, the reason for that is the app itself will actually only send the alert if you're in that polygon. Before, it was countywide. You live in the county, you got the warning, even if it was for a part of the county. That's the way the NOAA weather radios work. Uh, the WCI3 weather app, though, you know, if you're sitting here in Potomac right there, you're just outside that polygon. You're not getting an alert on your app for that. If you're here in Bismarck or Rossville uh, or Hoopston, you did get the alert. So Danville should not have gotten the alert on the app. If they did, let me know. I may have my information wrong here. Um, but the way it's set up is that it, um, it's supposed to be based on your location. Pretty specific. It's a great update. We're happy to have it here. That new severe thunderstorm warning will continue Bismarck, just to the north there, and I think they've been a little generous and had that go as far west as Potomac and even Rankin. Maybe we'll get some to so the strongest one, but I'm suspecting the strongest core of winds going to be Hoopston into Warren County, Indiana. Fountain County is this one right here. There's Fountain County. There's Warren, Vermilion, Benton counties. Uh, so that's what we have here. Other than that, that's the storm of the day for us here in central Illinois. We thought we'd get a couple of these strong to severe storms, and that's been the case for us. Not really worried about those storms out to the west. This batch of storms is taking advantage of some of that instability and making it uh, happen, uh, making things go here for, for the region. Again, here's Iroquois County, Watsika, Gilman, Buckley, Loda. There's Paxton, Hoopston, Rankin, Easterlin sits right there, Potomac, Bismarck, uh, Rossville sits down here. 
Danville is right there. There's Interstate 74. There's Interstate 57. Route 1 carries you north from Watsika to Danville. 136 carries off to the west towards Potomac, Armstrong, Gifford, and Rantoul. Route 9 sits right here. This is really east of route east on Route 9 between Rankin and the state line, including Hoopston. Route 1 from 136 northward, really from about Bismarck northward. And I really think this is going to carry more in this general direction here. So I'm not too concerned for the severe storms for Potomac or Danville. Still, yeah, I think you'll get some rumbles of thunder in the neighborhood. Doesn't, you don't have to be too far away for that. Uh, but continuing to move to the south and east here. I'll go ahead and put a time of arrival on. And uh, let me switch some data off and so we can get a clean look at it here. We're using the Chicago radar at this point. This storm moving uh, to the south and east. So we'll go about there. You know, really Rossville, 845. And then a lot of those towns are Indiana towns. Covington, you may know Covington. You head over to the Beef House in that east direction on 74. Covington's out that way in Indiana. May make it there by 10 o'clock if it lasts that long. The general idea is that the further south and east these storms go, the weaker they'll become. And so hopefully that trend will continue here uh, for a while. Let's jump back to our sky cam. There we go. Now we're starting to see these storms here, that lightning off to the north and east. We're watching that storm in Iroquois County. Continuing to see it here. I think you'll see some more flashes. Caught one there. Uh, you know, no guarantee that we're going to get a storm in Champaign. The trends are suggesting maybe things will stay around us, but you'll see some of that lightning off in the distance and uh, continue to have that be the case here. As I just edit, I'm watching it here. I need to do a little focus reset. There we go. You see the lightning off in the distance and keep an eye on it here. Uh, I do want to check some other data. Looks like uh, National Weather Service talking about uh, one to two inches of rain. Southern Iroquois County, some training near Woodworth and Milford. So there may be some isolated flooding. They're going to continue to monitor that. That's that storm we're looking off to the northeast. So far in Rankin, saw someone say they got nothing. Yeah, it seems like you look out the east window, north windows. You'll see that storm as it dives to the south and east there. And that's what we're watching on our cameras. Well, that's about it. There's no really other concerning storms that have my eyes in central Illinois. It's really riding down the state line here, and it may continue into uh, Warren and Fountain Counties, Indiana, before it hits Danville. I don't really think I'm too concerned for Danville for severe weather at this point. should be to the east of that here. So that's what we're going to watch. Again, folks in the chat letting me know and uh, keeping an eye on it. As far as the timing here, I'd like to suggest that with the way things are looking, we may end up uh, missing out on storms in Champaign. I don't think many people would complain about that. The severe thunderstorm watch does continue. It's just McLean, Livingston, Ford, Iroquois County. They've not decided to extend that, and they may not decide to extend it here. Um, to the south and east, the threat becoming more isolated and uh, continuing to, to be that way. So that's what we're going to watch. You know, watch or not, you know, whoop de doo <laughs> And we got some storms that are there, and that's about it, though, for the region. The latest update from the Storm Prediction Center did bring that slight risk down like 20, 30 miles to Interstate 72, 74. And, you know, we still have that marginal all the way down to Interstate 70, but I suspect the later we go, the lower the threat's going to be here as we continue to watch these storms carry off to the south and to the east. So here we are. Uh, we're looking in area-wide now. We've got Vermilion and... Iroquois counties in Illinois under severe thunderstorm warnings until 9.15. The nice thing here is, uh, the cool thing about this program is that it's going to auto-select the radar based on the location. So based on the view I have now, it's going to use the Chicago radar. But if I switch it to the east there, it's closest to Indiana. So you just saw that the palette color switch a little bit. That's what that is looking at. When it comes to the velocity products, Chicago and... Um, Just kind of getting, a, getting my bearings here. So Chicago, and we'll check out Indianapolis as well. You get the idea that the core of winds is right now near Ambia, Hickory Grove, east of Hoopston. Still some blustery winds off to the west, and so we're going to watch that and keep an eye on it here. Um, kind of interested in that little, let me check the check some things here. I'm going to do a little multitasking. Uh, so we're going to watch and keep an update on the storms here. Still more storms in Onarga, north of Cisna Park, have my eyes on. Now, there's still some heavy rain and storms in that area as we continue to watch here. 
kind of pulling the velocity. I get to look at three different radars. I can pick which one here. Kind of interested in that little feature near Cisna Park, to be honest. And um, sending a, the National Weather Service a question real quick as we continue to, to watch real fast. Um, little spot here. So we're going to continue to watch it and keep you updated uh, for a little while longer. Time now is 8.45. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mute the audio and I'm going to get some things taken care of behind the scenes here. And, uh, and I'll check back in here in a second, but I just want to take care of a few things. And um, monitor some things here. We're going to get some questions and get some things lined up for our, whoop, shoot, press the button. Sometimes I do that. We're just going to leave the radar up and um, monitor things a little bit behind the scenes. I got to get ready for the show at nine. So kind of, I want to just kind of do that real fast and get a few things, get a few ducks in a row for the show. So severe thunderstorm warning continues. We're watching those storms. We'll have an update for you shortly. All right, everyone, I'm going to stop this live stream here to get ready for the show at 9. So uh, if we need to, we'll cut back on. If not, join me on WCIX News at 9. And if we need to cut back